난 강해졌다. 돌격해! And then I'm going to come back in and put a down hit in. I want to know what's the science behind lumberjacking. And all the sawing, splintering, and spinning. We're going to be using some tools that would have been used in the woods years ago. Uh, some of our competition tools, a little modified, but uh, basically the same tools. First, the basics, a really sharp axe. We're going to start with a horizontal chop. And Ryan's actually going to use this axe and chop through uh, half it from one side. You'll see those marks on the block. Yep. And then he's going to turn and chop in through that back side. He's going to be chopping with a uh, pair of lightweight shoes on, uh, but he actually has uh, safety guards and shins underneath there. Yeah, that's my next and question. And those footholds are there just to keep his feet nice and balanced on this log. Now, obviously, this is something you should not try at home. The horizontal chop is a competition event which demands skill and training. Ryan has spent years perfecting his technique to perform it safely. Hi, Ryan. Anytime. That was great. Ryan, you hit hard, man. All right, you want to go take a look at your handiwork? Well, yeah. Come on. So what's the key to this first strike? Don't hit your foot and try to see how your wood's going to open. With large chunks of wood flying with each strike, I can see why accuracy is important. Wow. You could oh. not have hit more on the line. That's amazing. That axe really sank in there, huh? Yeah. I was amazed at how hard you swung and how few chops it took to actually get through this. Well, I slowed it down a little bit and took my time and took bigger hits than I normally would. And you still did 37 seconds or so. Was it really? Yeah, wow. right? As Ryan puts his whole body into each chop, the force is channeled into the cutting edge of the ax. The whipping motion can get the ax head moving at speeds of up to 80 miles per hour using his body's energy for maximum efficiency. So that's pretty impressive right there, to go through a block like that. Well, I mean, clearly these things will obliterate wood. It will. You want to try them out on a few other substances we have sure. to bring with us? I've never chopped anything other than wood. <laughs> well, I decided to give Nikki the chance to broaden her horizons with some glass blocks. Safety goggles firmly in place, she gives it her best shot. Wow. How'd that feel? That was amazing. That's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool noise. They kind of exploded in there. Yeah. And look at the sculpture you made. What do you want to call it? Uh, smashed glass. Uh, I was thinking sunset in the Riviera, but okay. smashed glass is good. <laughs> okay. All right, Nikki, here it comes. I like my face. It's a lot of anger right there. What were you, <laughs> what were you thinking while you were doing That's a lot of anger. <laughs> Glass is among the most brittle of building materials. Unlike wood, which absorbs some of the blunt force, the crystalline structure of the block shatters within one ten thousandth of a second. They exploded. I was thinking you were going to get through them all. You know, Ooh. I have to tell you, I didn't think you were going to get through them. That was awesome. If only trees were made of glass, lumberjacking would be a whole lot easier. But what if they were made of ice? See, what happens with ice is that, you know, as soon as you bust that crystalline form, everything just goes everywhere. 
I was proud of you for putting everything right past the lens because now we have this cool Death Star thing yeah. coming at us. It's just awesome. And now I tackle the trickiest challenge of lumberjacking, burling. Burling is the sport of log rolling. And it originates from the lumberjack's most dangerous job, moving logs downriver. It's grown into an international sport, and Rich the Burler is one of the best. And even the best can make it look pretty darn hard. At 500 frames per second, we can see just how much technique is required for burling. It's a lot different than I thought it was. He's taking very, very small steps. Yeah, it's really it's small, quick steps, really staying on that top portion of that log. You'll see he never steps really far over that edge of that log and never goes far back on the other side. He wants to keep his balance nice and straight. Right. Once the log begins to spin, the lack of resistance from the water makes it almost impossible to stop. So what was once a hazardous profession has become a challenging sport. So I've been challenged to burling, which I've never done before, which is log rolling, which I think I'm gonna be an expert at, but apparently I've been challenged by a beauty queen. Meet Christy Ann Unger, New Hampshire beauty pageant champion and novice log roller. And she's ready to take me out for a spin. I'm gonna land on my face on the log and I'm gonna be paralyzed, but it was fun doing the show. If that happens, I may not be around to grab our big shot of the day. So maybe I better get this out of the way first. Lumberjacks claim they can make even the largest tree fall within a few feet of where they want, using this age-old technique. Basically what we're trying to do is uh, estimate that total tree height. So by using this stick, I'm triangulating between my eye, the base of the tree, and the top of the tree. And when I can see the base of the stump and the top of that tree all within that same profile, I know the top of the tree is going to land right here. Trevor and Billy cut a V-shaped notch in the tree trunk, facing where they want it to fall. The V-cut will weaken the trunk, so gravity, with a little help from these guys, will bring it down. They need just one more cut on the backside to release the tension before the big heave ho. That was awesome. In slow motion, we can see how the logger's precise cuts direct the way the tree will fall. You can see how we made that back cut just slightly higher to keep that tree from coming back at all. See that fiber bending right down over that edge. It's kind of a tearing too. It almost rotates 90 right. degrees. Yeah, what happened to the rope puller guys? <laughs> <laughs> Run! Run. <laughs> what a sound that was too. Yeah. Let's hope my luck continues when it comes to burling. First, a trial run. <laughs> hey, I'm still holding out the pole. Once I was properly waterlogged, I was ready for round one. Go! Go on. <laughs> that looked like a tie. Round two. No, no, not yet. And finally, round three. And by a fraction of a second, I'm giving it to the guy in green. Where's my tiara? That was the talent portion. Now we're going to evening gown. That's where I'm gonna clean up. You should be watching the other person's feet to anticipate any attempts to speed up or slow down the log. All right, so now was it difficult to actually pay attention to what you're doing without laughing at my technique? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> See, look, I'm looking at my feet exactly what I'm not supposed to be doing. Yep, and I was looking at your feet, too. <laughs> but, <No>. yeah, <gasps> did I actually win? For real? Yeah. I let you win, though. <laughs>
I just didn't want to make you look like a fool on TV. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> I do that fine on my own, thank you. You didn't have to help. Oh, that was it. Look at that.